Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have probably my last unhaul of the year. I unhaul books I want to say pretty frequently I don't think I've unhauled too many this year but then especially over the last couple of months the majority of what I've been reading I've really really enjoyed but when I read a book and I don't love it or maybe it's something like a thriller which I did enjoy but I don't tend to keep thrillers because I never have any desire to reread them when I know what happens I put them in a pile in the corner of the room and then when I have a reasonable amount I film an unhaul for you guys so today I have 12 books to talk about all but one of them I've read and then the one that I haven't read I did attempt to read it and I DNF'd it so I'm just going to get cracking get stuck into this video starting off with a few arcs the first one we have is three fifths by John Vircher this is a thriller it was sent to me by Pushkin Press and it is a racially charged story set on the backdrop of the LA riots and the OJ Simpson trial we follow a mixed race main character in here who is white passing and nobody knows that he is actually half black and it is about him navigating the world that he lives in with the LA riots and the OJ Simpson trial and also his best friend has just been released from prison after so many years and he is now a white supremacist. Really enjoyed this, gave it four stars, I just won't reread it. We also have The Mermaid, The Witch in the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. This one was sent to me by Walker Books. This is a very diverse young adult fantasy with a genderqueer main character. It takes place on a pirate ship called The Dove and The Dove masquerades as a passenger ship however when the pirates get so far into their voyage they reveal their actual true purpose which is to take the passengers as slaves and then sail off to sell them somewhere so the main character is genderqueer and they grow close to a highborn lady on the ship and together those two hatch a plan to free a captured mermaid really enjoyed this yet again especially the writing style in here but it is like a standalone young adult fantasy which aren't my fave i do just generally prefer series and while I did really enjoy this I won't be reading it again. The last of the arcs is When Life Gives You Mangoes by Corinne Getton. This was once again sent to me by Pushkin Press. This one follows a young girl called Clara who lives on an island and she has lost all of her memories of the previous summer. One day a girl arrives on the island from England. She's visiting her grandmother and this is when things start to change for Clara. She's also fallen out with her best friend and it is just like a children's contemporary with a twist. Really enjoyed this story again but it is number one a children's book and two a contemporary so I have no desire to keep it or reread it. The next one we have is the one that I DNF'd. This is Battleground by Rachel Churcher. This was sent to me unsolicited quite a while ago. It was at least last year and let's just say there were some strange circumstances around this author and this book. It was a really weird experience. I, I didn't want it but after I'd had it for a while I did try and read it and after I think did I make it through one chapter I just decided it, it wasn't for me so yeah I don't want this book I, I will be unhauling that. <laughs> a young girl contemporary that I enjoyed was The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. This is about a girl whose boyfriend died in a swimming accident last summer and to try and get back into her life she makes a list of things to do including date a boy, attend parties, join a club, travel and swim. I really liked this actually. I thought that the romance elements in here were really cute as well. Um, it's just a young girl contemporary so I will never reread it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video I I do just generally unhaul thrillers so I will be unhauling Good Me Bad Me by Ali Land. This one follows a girl called Annie whose mother is a serial killer and she has been given a new home and a new identity while her mother's trial is ongoing so that obviously for her own protection so that people don't associate her with her serial killer mother and Annie was actually the one who turned her mother into the police and it is just about Annie in the run-up to her mother's trial. I did really like this book. The beginning was very slow but I did like the ending and how all that played out. But um, yeah, I just, I read thrillers for the thrill. And when I've had the thrill, I um, I don't see the point in rereading them because I, I know what happens. So it will never be as exciting the second time around. There are exceptions to this. I do still have Night Film by Marisha Pessel and also You by Caroline Kepner because I do see myself rereading those. However, standard thrillers like this, yeah, I, I just don't keep them. One that I read a very long time ago is The Astonishing Colour of Africa. 
after by Emily X R Pan. This is a young adult fabulous novel about a girl whose mother commits suicide and the main character starts seeing her mum appearing to her as a bird and she believes that the bird is telling her to go to Taiwan which is where her mother was from to kind of embrace her heritage, get to know that side of her family and explore her culture. I really enjoyed this when I read it but I knew I would never read it again. I did lend this to my best friend Ryan ages ago as well and he returned all of the books that I'd lent to him a couple of months ago now. So yeah, I would have unhauled this not long after I read it but I, I lent it out and it only just returned to me. We also have The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigic. This is a horror story about a high school that burned down 25 years ago. I think three people were killed, a bunch of people were injured and one of them disappeared completely which is Carly Johnson and nobody knows what happens until they find this diary. I did really like this, it's fast paced, it's kind of mixed media but kind of in the same vein as thrillers it does have like a resolution and if you know the resolution, I don't think it would be as enjoyable to reread unless it's one of your favorite books unless it's one of your favorite books. So I will be unhauling this one as well. And then the last four I have are all fantasy. Starting off with the one you've probably all been waiting for, we have Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. This is a young adult fantasy about two different factions of like superheroes. It was predictable. I hated the characters. I gave it one star. That's definitely my least favorite book of the year. No competition. The next one we have is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is the standard UK hardback. It was sent to me by Penguin on the release. However, this was also the Illumicrate book for September and I also was sent a special edition of it by Owlcrate. So I don't need <laughs> three copies of this book, although I did really enjoy it. So I will be giving this one to my best friend Ryan because he is interested in it and he may as well have my spare copy. Another book that I really disliked is Never Contented Things by Sarah Porter. This is a young adult fairy story about Foster siblings. It's real weird. They have like a romantic kind of relationship going on and it's kind of about trauma and people who really struggle, how they kind of cling on to the only good things in their life. But I just didn't like it. It was all very ambiguous and all very vague for me. I'm going to be sending this to Jade from Jade Ray Reads because she has read a book by Sarah Porter before which she really enjoyed. I don't know if Jade's gonna like this. I don't think she is but um, she wanted to try it so she is well Welcome to it. And the final one I have, I'm kind of sad to be unhauling, but it is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This is a young adult sci-fi that's set in like a futuristic Disneyland where the Disney princesses are androids. They are all programmed to be these perfect people, obviously, because they're supposed to be the equivalent of Disney princesses. But because they are androids, they do develop their own like personalities and wants as well that they're not really allowed to have. I wanted to love this. The premise of it sounded amazing, but I just don't think that Jess Rothenberg leaned into the Disney, like futuristic Disney park as much as she could have. There were so many possibilities for this like setting to be really explored and for me to really love the setting. However, I, I didn't. I gave it three stars and this cover is absolutely stunning. This was also one of the books from Shelf Love Crate last year. So it has under jacket art as well. Absolutely stunning book. And I don't want to unhaul it for that reason, but I didn't really like the book sadly. And I'm just, look at that. I'm really, really upset. I need shelf space. I've just had a bookshelf delivered today. It's just on the floor, flat pack. So I am going to be assembling that and sorting some of my books out. But I think even after that bookshelf is installed, I still won't have as much space as I would like. So things like this sadly are not going to stay and I shouldn't be keeping it anyway just because I like the cover. I should only be keeping books that I like the contents of. Well, I did like the contents of it but not enough to keep it so I'm unhauling it, okay? <laughs> so those are all of the books I'm going to be unhauling this time. A little bit of a sneak peek, I guess. I am going to be attempting an epic unhaul project next year. I'm not sure how it's going to work yet. I'm not sure how well it's going to go, but I have a lot of books on my shelves that are things like thrillers and young adult contemporary that when I read them, I don't think I will want to keep them. So I just need to prioritize reading them so that I can clear a bit of space on my shelves. So I am hoping to work through that in 2021, in which case I will be unhauling quite a bit next year. But those are all of the books that I'm unhauling this time around. I guess I was going to say, let me know if you've read any of these books and you've enjoyed them 
them but then that would be kind of sad for you if I'm unhauling them um so maybe don't do that but please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website the instagram for that and 10% off discount code but that's it for me today guys bye Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go Where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no We're never gonna quit it, no